What's going on, YouTube nights? Welcome to Lords of the Long Box and another edition of Letters of the Long Box, where myself and Mikey Sutton answer your mailbag question mailbag questions uh, from the Lords of the Long Box videos and from the Geekosity page. Uh, this is the third episode, man. So you guys know the rules. If you have a question about the DCEU, the MCU, Disney Plus, maybe even Star Wars stuff. Leave a comment if they're in the comment section below. Ask your question, and Mikey will go through and pick out uh, the ones he deems worthy, and we'll answer your questions next week at the same time, right around Thursday between 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock Pacific, whenever I get a chance to do it. But uh, let's get right to it, boys and girls. We got some good questions from you guys today. We got about uh, – shout out to all of you from last week's video – uh, we got a good 40 questions or so, so we picked out six or seven good ones here. So uh, let's get right to it, boys and girls. All right. Uh, these are coming from Lords of the Long Box. The last video we did, this first one is from Benjamin Cross. Do you believe that Namor will ever be introduced into the MCU? If so, do you believe he will be a main villain in the movie, a cameo in the movie as his first appearance? And what else would you expect it to be in? Uh, Mikey replies back from what I've been told Namor would be initially seen as a villain until he evolves into a, more of an anti-hero. He has a love hate relationship with humanity, just as he does in the comic books. Uh, one of the very first scoops on this page are this channel with the black Knight was, uh, Dwayne, the rock Johnson was in talks to be, uh, play Namor. Uh, that was last year, by the way. And then, uh, we had reported during that show, uh, that the uh, Namor was probably going to debut as the villain or at least the protagonist to Black Panther in Black Panther 2. That still may be the uh, the case right now. And there are also talks of it being an Atlantis Attacks movie. We reported that last year, by the way. Uh, obviously, The Rock was in talking to... The Rock was talking to Kevin Feige to see if he can become, play the role of Namor. Uh, we don't know if he used that as leverage to get the Shazam movie. If you remember the Shazam movie last year was not moving at all. Once The Rock set out those rumors and started talking, boom, DC made it happen. He's going to be in uh, his uh, Black Adam solo film, and he's talking about Justice Society of America. So can he play both roles? We shall see. It'd be, it would be awesome to see The Rock play both Namor and Black Adam. That would be huge, because The Rock is blockbuster right now. He can pretty much do whatever he wants, right? If The Rock comes to you and says he wants something, you're going to do it. All right, so thank you, Benjamin Cross, for that question. Uh, the next question is Paul Hurst. Uh, growing up, I loved watching Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Do you think we will see Firestar at all? Keep up the great work from the UK. Thank you very much, Paul Hurst from the UK. Wow, look at that. International. This show is international. Uh, yes, Firestar will be coming to the MCU. The chances of her meeting both Spider-Man and Iceman are quite high as there is tremendous nostalgia for that beloved animated series. Spider-Man is amazing friends. One of the first times I've ever seen, probably, yeah, that is the literally the first time I've ever seen the X-Men on the small screen in an animated form or any form to be matter of fact. To this very day, I, I mean, for a while, I always thought Wolverine had a weird Aussie British accent because if you watch the uh, Spider-Man is Amazing Friends, the episode that had the X-Men, Wolverine has this really weird Aussie or British accent for the longest time. I, you know, I saw him when I was in like third, fourth grade. So I, I, as a kid, I thought all Canadians had a British or a British accent. So there you go, man. Also, Doctor Strange was in uh, some of the early episodes too. It's really, some of the guest stars in there was pretty phenomenal from go out the, uh, the Marvel Universe. So that's my cape cloak of levitation right there, man. So, you know, I'm a big Strange fan. I, I keeps it strange. All right. Next question comes from C.T. Cook. Who well, has a kooky question? C.T. Cook asks, asks, I hope Moon Knight really leans into the Egyptian mythology and mental illness like in Jeff Lemire's run. Uh, yes, Moon Knight will be heavily steeped in Egyptian mythology. Um, when Marvel finally started shipping new books again, they shipped out an Avengers book, went full on fish to conch you, talking about Moon Knight. They, I know the prior series, he was kind of, they were trying to figure out you know, he's wearing a three-piece suit. Is he crazy? Is he sane? It wasn't really that heavily on the Fist of Conchu stuff. But Moon Knight's origins are the Fist of Conchu, where he kind of gets more abilities as the, as the moon comes out. Crescent stars, the whole nine, man. I would love to see that version of Moon Knight. I'm not a big fan of the three-piece suit crazy Moon Knight. Um, although he's always kind of been kooky. But give me the Fist of Conchu any day. Nick, uh, next question is our friend Nicholas Pickle. I always love saying Nicholas Pickle. I don't know why I say it with Pickle. 
but it's Nicholas Pickle, or it could be Pickle for this whole time. We don't know. Anyway, uh, Nicholas Pickle asks, is Ghost Rider's next appearance on the big screen or Hulu slash Disney Plus? Will it be Johnny Blaze? And he says, thanks. Thank you, Nicholas Pickle. Uh, they're definitely leaning towards a Johnny Blaze incarnation. They have gone back and forth on where he will debut, but the Midnight Suns will ride with them and Blade. So we've been, man, we've been bullish on Midnight Suns for a while now. We knew they were coming. Then they got pushed to the side, but they're just still coming. And you're going to have Feige doing them. Jeff Loeb really wanted to push the Midnight Suns. And Kevin Feige still wants to do it because it's a great team of kind of kooky supernatural characters. And if you haven't noticed, Marvel is going deep into the supernatural and horror side of the MCU. So look forward for that. Uh, next question is from Tyler Chinnery. Have you ever heard, have you heard anything about devil dinosaur making his way to the MCU? Will we see Hulk riding a dinosaur in the savage land, man, I'm gonna tell you what, if they do that, I would lose my lid, man. People would go nuts. If they saw Hulk riding a dinosaur in the savage land, a uh, devil dinosaur is one of the characters being developed to appear in the X-Men visit the savage land on this very channel here about two or three weeks ago. Uh, we did a, uh, we did a scoop that the X-Men were going to be doing uh, coming to the savage land. And that's where we're, they were going to introduce Mr. Sinister, Sauron, and Devil Dinosaur, as, as well as a couple of other X-Men. So they are working on that way back last year. Uh, when we, the Black Knight told us that the Kevin Feige was really bullish on bringing the Savage Land to the big screen. Then you have Kazar, you have uh, Shayna, uh, you have Sauron, who's the crazy pterodactyl guy with weird uh, you know, uh, mental powers. So there you go. So Devil Dinosaur. Obviously, Devil Dinosaur is coming in a more kid-friendly version it's either to Di I, I think it was Disney proper, the Disney channel, that is, when I say Disney proper, or it could have been Disney Plus, but I think they're leaning toward Disney because it's going to be an animated series more for the kiddies since it's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. But you can still have a crazy Devil Dinosaur in the MCU as well. That would be pretty cool, man. All right. Uh, the next couple of questions come from our friends over on the Geekosity, Geekosity Facebook page, the uh, page that uh, Mikey Sutton and his Mary men of mad merry men mad men whatever i tried his men uh, run this page i'm on there as well mikey drops a lot of scoops on there uh the first one's coming from david steinberg is there any truth to is there any truth to there being a chance of batfleck meaning ben affleck's batman returning in a miniseries if the snyder cut does well i'm assuming he means on uh, hbo max since he's saying miniseries uh mikey replies i was skeptical of this initially but i'm here what well, but I'm hearing it is true. AT&T is taking a wait and see attitude, but needless to say, if the Sny attitude, but needless to say, if the Snyder cut is successful, it will lead to several spinoffs from HBO max. There will be more details on the July 4th scoop jam. As we told you last week, going to have a bunch of scoops. So we really can't let too much out of the bag right now, but remember stay tuned for that July 4th week we're gonna have a bunch of scoop dropping with multiple channels like we do on our typical scoop jams from with mikey sutton all right last question horace jarrell asks mikey any truth to chadwick boseman's pay dispute with marvel studios it's out there from some of the outlets that i trust no not at all uh there are no contract disputes uh i know there's been lots of rumors going around about chadwick boseman possibly being sick because he looked very gaunt and kind of sucked in on some uh, social media pictures uh, he was on a i think it was on a zoom interview and people said he looks super skinny so it could be that he's getting skinny for a role these hollywood actors man they had some of the best nutritionists and uh and personal trainers man they uh, they put on 30 pounds of roll they lose it and then they bulk up they lose weight they become skinny i mean it's just a thing hopefully i mean he's not sick he hasn't come out and told anybody he's sick people have asked about it and you know everything is Fine, supposedly now, but no, there's no rumors to, I mean, Bat, you know, Black Panther made over a billion dollars, highly successful, one of the most successful solo films in the MCU. Um, I don't think uh, the Chadwick Boseman's willing to risk that. I mean, Wakanda seems so, see, it's, I mean, see, it's so much more to people than just a movie. Um, if you remember when Black Panther came out, you know, and Wakanda Forever, it was a, it was a rallying cry for a whole group of people throughout the entire world, not even here in the U S but even to the continent of Africa where they're selling out when I think it's sold the box office record for uh, film openings or just any film in general in Africa, the whole continent. That's amazing, man. So um, no, there's no contract disputes. He's just waiting just like everybody else is. And hopefully we'll get to see it really soon. And it'll do gangbusters as I'm sure like the first one did, but 
All right, boys and girls, and that's it. So make sure you uh, like, subscribe. Also, if you have a question, leave it in the comments below. And then uh, if Mikey picks it out, you'll get a Marvel No Prize. Until next time, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.